Let's look at the Chapter 5 Practice Test Review. Find the composite function f o g of x and the domain, given that f of x equals x minus 2 and g of x equals the square root of 1 minus x. When I have f o g of x, I actually like to write it like this. And what it does is it just reminds me that um, in my function f of x, I'm going to put g of x into all of those x's. So let's do that. We're going to have the square root of 1 minus x, because remember I'm putting that in for x, minus 2. And this actually turns out to be the answer for the first part. The next part is I'm asking you, well, what's the domain? Well, the domain of the first one is all real numbers. When we look at this function, remember that inside of the square root, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So what I do is I just make the inside greater than or equal to 0. I want to solve for x. Now remember when I multiply or divide by a negative, it's going to change this sign. So it turns out that x has to be less than or equal to 1 for this to be greater than or equal to 0. So the domain of the composite function is x such that x is less than or equal to 1. Or you could write negative infinity to 1, including 1. Either one of these answers is good. You don't actually need both of them. Verify the functions f of x equals 3x plus 4 and g of x equals 1 third times x minus 4 are inverses of each other. Remember to do this, we need to prove that f of g of x equals x and g of f of x also equals x. You need to prove both of them. So let's do the first one. So f of g of x remember I'm putting in g of x into all the x's so I'm going to have 3 times 1 third x minus 4 plus 4 okay um, what I'm going to do next is multiply these so 1 third times 3 is simply 1. So we're going to have x minus 4 plus 4. And indeed, f of g of x turns out to be x. So now we need to do g of f of x. So we're going to have 1 third times. Now x is 3x plus 4 and then minus 4. I'm going to continue to do what's in parentheses first. So I have 1 third. Um, 4 minus 4 is 0, so I'll just 3x. And 1 third times 3 is x. So I just proved that these two functions are indeed inverses of each other. So the logarithmic equation algebraically. Express solutions in exact form, not decimals. Remember, exact form does not mean decimals. I don't want to see any decimals. If you do give me a decimal answer, it's going to be wrong. The first thing to remember is that when you add, you're actually multiplying. So we're going to have the log base 6 of x plus 4 times x plus 3 equals 1. Now we're going to change this into um, an exponential function. So what we're going to have is we're going to have 6 to the first equals. What I'm going to do now is FOIL this. So we're going to have x squared plus 7x plus 12. I'm solving, so I need this to equal 0. Um, 6 to the first is 6. So I'm going to have 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 12 minus 6. 
So we're going to have 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 6. I need to factor it, and it turns out it's going to factor into x plus 1 times x plus 6. And it still equals 0. Um, x equals negative 1. And x equals negative 6. Now what's really interesting is that we can't have the log of a negative number. So 6 is not going to work, or negative 6 is not going to work, because negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, and negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 is actually going to work because negative 1 plus 4 is 3, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So our only solution for this one is x equals negative 1. For this next one, I actually I ask you to use your calculator. So I'm just going to move my calculator over here so you can see what I'm doing. What we're going to do is we're going to make this side y1 and this side y2. And now you'll notice that I ask you to round the answer to two decimal places. So let's go into y1, and we're going to have 2 to the x plus 2. Remember to put the exponent into parentheses. 5 to the 1 minus 2x. And I like to graph um, z standard first just to see what it looks like. Okay, so we can see that they're intersecting in here. If you want, we can zoom in. It's not really necessary. So I'm going to do second calc and intersect. And the first curve, the second curve, and it doesn't matter for the guess. And it turns out that um, x is 0 0.057. Let me bring this down. Um, I do ask you to round to two decimal places. So the answer will be 0 0.06 for this one. If you want to tell me what you did on the calculator, that's fine, but I'm just really looking for the answer for this one. Solve the exponential equation algebraically. Express solutions in exact form. So once again, I don't want a decimal. I'm going to mark it wrong if you give me a decimal answer. So let's write this one out. We have 2 to the 2x plus 2 to the x plus 2 minus 12 equals 0. The first thing is, is that I have three terms, so I know that I'm going to be factoring. Um, I want something that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So I'm going to look at this one. I know that 2 to, this, to the x to the second is the same thing as 2 to the 2x because when you have a power to a power you multiply. This is the same thing as saying 2 to the x times 2 to the second. Okay, Because remember when we multiply we add the exponents. Minus 12 equals 0. And this is when we're going to use u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal 2 to the x. Sorry about this stuff. My pen is just doing that for some reason. Um, the reason is, is that I want something squared plus something x minus 12. So we have u squared plus, and this is u, u times 2 squared minus 12 equals 0. We have u squared plus 2 squared is 4 for u minus 12 equals 0. And now I'm just going to factor. So I know that 6 times 2 is 12, so I'm going to have u plus 6 times u minus 4. Uh, 4. I don't know why I was thinking for u minus 2. And there we go. Um, equals 0. So I have u plus 6 
x. Actually, let's just say um, u equals negative 6, because that's going to give us a little more room. And I think that we all understand that idea. So u equals negative 6, and u equals 2. Well, u, remember, is 2 to the x. So 2 to the x equals negative 6, and 2 to the x equals 2. Now, there's no real number that I could put in for x that would give me a negative number. So I know that this cannot be my answer. Um, I know that 2 to the first is 2, so x turns out to be 1. The population of a colony of mosquitoes obeys the law of uninhibited growth. If n is the number of bacteria in the culture and t is the time in hours, express n as a function of t. Basically, this first one, I'm just asking you to write out the formula. And hopefully you just have this in your notes so it won't be um, too hard to remember. Okay. So we have um, the number of bacteria at time t equals the initial number of bacteria e to the k. Remember, k is a constant we don't know, times t. Okay, if there are a thousand mosquitoes initially and there are 1,800 after one day, what is the size of the colony after three days? The first thing we need to know is our constant. We don't know that yet. But we do know that there are a thousand mosquitoes initially. So that's our a thousand. After one day, we have 1,800 equals E. We don't know K. But time is one day. Okay, so we're going to divide by a thousand on both sides. So we have e to the k equals one point eight. Okay, then we're going to do our natural log, and we know that the natural log of one point eight equals the natural log of e to the k. The k is going to pop out front, so we have the natural log of 1.8 equals um, k, the natural log of e, and it turns out that k is approximately 0 0.5878, and going to four decimal places is just a good idea. Um, the second part of the question is, what is the size of the colony after three days? So let me make just a little squiggly here. So our formula now is the same, except for we know what k is. And we still have 1,000, because that's our initial, e to the 0 0.58. Seven, eight. Hopefully, this is still in the PowerPoint here. Times t. Um, it asks after three days, so we want to know after three days. So we'll have a thousand times e to the zero point five eight seven eight. Sorry about that pen. I'm not sure what's going on, but. We end up with approximately, we end up with approximately 5,832 mosquitoes. So both of these answers are actually required for this problem. How long is it until there are more than 10,000 mosquitoes? So, we're going to have 10,000 equals 1,000 e to the 0 0.5878 times t. We don't know the time, and that's actually what we're looking for. So I'm going to divide by 1,000 on both sides. So we end up with 10 equals e to the 0 0.5878t. We're going to take the natural log of on both sides. 
So we have the natural log of 10 equals, um, and remember this is going to pop out front, so let's just do that right away. A T, the natural log of E. Um, what we're going to do is, remember the natural log, here we go, the natural log of E is 1. So basically I'm just going to divide by this on both sides. So we have the natural log of 10 divided by 0 0.5878. Equals t, and we get t to be approximately 3.91. The problem with this answer is it's not 10,000, it turns out to be 9,000 something. So we need to round up. So if we say that t equals 4, we for sure have 10,000 in there. If you leave this as your answer, I'm going to mark one off because this does not give us 10,000. And to check it, simply put 3.91 in here or even 3.91 and you're still not going to get the 10,000 answer. Graph f of x equals the log of x minus 4 plus 2 and it's inverse on this graph. Um, one warning I am going to give you is that even though this one is log base 10, on the test, I might have a 2 or a 5 or anything in here. So it's really good to have all of your notes. And we talked about this in section 5.3 or 5.4. And the first thing that I'm actually going to do for this one um, is graph the log of x and then do our transformations. So let's do that. Um, this is base 10. So I'm going to have 1 over 10 negative 1, 1, 0, and then 10, 1. Another thing that will be on your test, I'm not going to put any numbers in here. I'm going to leave that up to you, however you would like to do it. I'm going to go by 2s. I'm not saying that's what you should do on your test, 2, 4, 6, on your test, but um, it's really up to you. And you'll notice that um, I'm going to do the log of x in orange. So the first one is 1 tenth negative 1, and that's about right here. We have 1 0, it's about right here, and then 10 1, which is about here. So let me, and um, part of the reason that I'm doing this is it's going to make the other functions really easy. So let's do f of x. Okay, so one thing we know is we're actually going to be moving to the right 4 and then up 2. I'm going to make my xy table. And it's a good idea that you put this on your test. And I almost insist that you put it on your test just so I can see what you're doing. So what it means is the x value is moving 4 places. So we're going to add 4 to each of these. So when I add 4, it's just going to be 4 and a tenth, or 4.1, and this side is going to be the same. We're going to have 5, 0, and then 14, 1. So we're going to go to 4 and a tenth and graph this guy. So this is f of x. Now remember, to graph the inverse of x, it's really easy. All we're going to do is interchange the x and the y value. So instead of 4 and a tenth and negative 1, we're going to have negative 1 and 4 and 1 tenth. So let's do this. We have, so it's going to look, so I'm going to erase my f of x, the, the first one I did. I think now that you can see these are definitely inverses of each other. Um, when I draw my y equals x line, we can see that they're mirrors of each other. And that's really what I'm looking for. So on the test, I guess, what am I looking for? I'm going to be looking for f of x. If 
the ordered pairs that we have that we learned from the previous section. I'm going to be looking for their inverses, and I would like you to write them out, and the graph of both of them. So thanks for watching. Um, good luck on your test. Please remember to email me your proctor's test so I can get it sent out. Um, I've been writing down the proctor's emails, but um, sometimes I might write a letter wrong or a number wrong, and it's just kind of nice to hear from you that you're ready to get started.